It's the troubleshooting time of the week where we tackle your uncertainties. It can only be the Ask EMBN show. Right, let's kick things off with Scott James Eaton. He's asking, hi guys, I have the hard seven with a SRAM NX on it. I seem to be constantly having problems with it. I am thinking of swapping it all out for Shimano SLX. What is your advice, please? Well, I guess sooner or later you have to swap your uh, drive train out mm -hmm. on your e-bug because of the higher higher wear rate. So, um, yeah, why not? Yeah, I probably think there's been a few issues that I've heard of with Shimano, um, SRAM NX uh, from experience as well. Um, I think the Shimano stuff would be a good shout. It might last a little bit longer, but obviously it's a big financial outlay to get that whole group set. You can't just swap a derailleur for one derailleur, you know, Shimano for a SRAM and vice versa. So you I think need to you make can sure. put, I think you can put a, a Shimano cassette on a SRAM. Yeah, group some of set, it right? is cross compatible, but I think if you want it to work, you know, as designed, then it'd be a good chance to get the whole lot. So James Ibbett asks, uh, with Highbug X Duro N Duro Five, can the bike be ridden without a battery, or does this motor not disengaged? Well, the motor will disengage, but. Make James, sure. I'm one. Why? Mm, why? Why would you? I don't understand. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Uh, I mean, we've done it. Mm -hmm. We have definitely done it, but yeah. uh, and it's quite interesting to do it as well, actually. Yeah, I'd quite like just, to. Just, if, you, if, you're, if you're doing some downhill runs, yeah. if you're doing some uplift and doing yeah. that, I don't know where you're coming from on this one, no, mm. James. But bearing in mind, it is a Bosch unit as well, so it is known for being a little bit more restrictive. So you might struggle pa a bit more past than the, the 25k. Yeah. yeah. So maybe try it, but yeah, it's not going to be the best e-bike experience, but definitely doable for sure. Yeah, especially if you're doing uplift, you can just smash a load of runs <laughs> over the lighter bike. Yeah, Kona six eight two. He's saying, I'm thinking of getting an e-bike this summer. As I want to support the local dealer, I'm looking at Cube bikes, uh, and this is what they sell. My question is, is it worth going from a Cube Stereo 120 Pro to a race or TM model, or go for the 140, which I can get for the same price as a race model, but then have to go to, with the 27.5 wheels? In general, what I see is better suspension and gears, the extra money, but is it worth it, or should I upgrade these further on? And also, is 120 mil travel enough for a bit of trail riding? Is it enough? Is it enough? I don't I know. Only you can answer that. What you know, whatever trailers you ride. Mm. Uh, I mean, is it better suspension? Is it better suspension? It's that's that's a difficult one. I don't think. Uh, are you talking like for like? Is it is Rock Shocks versus Rock Shock? Is it mm. Fox versus Fox? I, I don't actually know. After Chris. Yeah, we check the bikes out a little bit. Um, yeah. Going back to the first, well, your last question. You're saying is 120 enough? Well, I've been riding the Canyon Neuron on, which is 130 mil travel, and I've done some big stuff. Went up Snowdon with Steve, descended like Reed D, one of the most technical tracks, and that Reed bike Z. was fine. Yeah. Reed D, sorry. But you're Chris Smith, though. Yeah, but then and I've done some drops and jumps, and probably some bigger stuff than you would do in your normal trail ride. And that mm. bike has 29 inch wheels, and I feel that that. that 29 and makes it for that short fall in suspension travel sometimes. Do you think that's Steve? Mm, I'd, I'd be tempted to go for the longer mm. travel bike, to be honest, Chris. Yeah. And what about his 27.5 wheels over the 29er? Uh, Again, it, I think it really depends on what style of riding you're doing. I think the 29 is obviously more suited for sort of trail and big days out sort of riding, whereas if you're more technical stuff, the 27.5 might be worth considering. I think, I think ultimately, um, I think you go for the longer travel bike because you'll probably be doing more riding. Mm -hmm. You'll probably want to explore new places. Yeah. I think the longer travel bike just gives you that little bit more, Chris. Yeah, and so. checking out those bikes as well. Um, I noticed some of the cheaper bikes actually come with a fixed seat post as well. And the more expensive one that you mentioned does come with a dropper. So maybe that might be something to worth add, considering. To, to expand on the question then, what would be your top top things to, top list of things? Mm -hmm. I, I'd go for sizing, get the right size bike, yep. strong wheels, mm -hmm. good tyres, Good brakes. Drop a seat post. Drop a seat post. There's yeah. your there's your five or six items which you need to tick off, I think, mm -hmm. before even looking at uh, suspension travel. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. But I think you need to get along to a demo day, try all those different bikes out. We've actually done what to do on a demo day. Let's check playing now. Now, a really, really important part of demoing bikes is make sure you get the setup right on each and every bike that you take out. Because like I mentioned earlier, you need to make comparisons between all the bikes. Now, if for example, you're with a reputable bike shop on a demo day, such as Race Car Cycles, their mechanics and engineers will be able to set up that bike exactly for use. Uh, meow, meow. Yep, yep. Meow. Uh, anyway, uh, it's from Meow Meow, and it says, what about scale size, 29 front, 27.5 rear, like the YT or the Canyon or the Fantic or the Ghost. Uh, most forks can handle 27.5 plus and 29, 29 inch also fits. 
What do you think? And would you try this in your own bikes out on the trail? Thank you and go on. Well, well it's obviously something that the Canyon Spectral on uses what we both ride. And I think that setup works really well. You've got that increased rollover with a front wheel and obviously that big grip uh, come from the rear tire. You've got a smaller 27.5 on the rear with a big fat tire. So it provides loads of grip. And as I mentioned, the rollover on the front is pretty yeah. good. I think the question is, would I try it on our own bikes? Well, yes, we do. But the, mm -hmm. the point is, that they're not, they're not, they, the bikes, they've been made for those wheel sizes, not yeah. something we've done aftermarket. So yeah. you need to be really careful about swapping, say, a 27.5 to a 29 up front because it's going to change the geometry of your bike. Uh, it's going to do such things as raise the bottom bracket, which makes the bike not corner as efficiently as it would uh, with how it's been designed. So, uh, yeah, it needs to be these have the geometry specific to those wheel sizes. Yeah, and if you want to see those bikes in action, we do the Canyon Spectral on versus the Neuron on. That one's on screen now. The Neuron on is similar to the Spectral in many ways. However, this time it has 29 inch wheels front and rear with fast rolling tires, it means trails like this become an absolute blast with a fast balanced ride. Right, Elliot Flowers, he's asking, I am deaf, how do I know when my battery is flat? Go on, bike gets lighter. Bike gets light. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. The battery's going. Like, the battery gets flat. You little it less loses weight. <laughs> obviously, you need to be looking at your heads-up display. You're going to see a battery indication on there, and obviously, you're going to feel it when it goes flat. I definitely yeah, you'll definitely feel it. Feel um, I'm, I'm surprised at that question, Elliot. Mm. I mean, surely you'll have you'll have noticed that, but obviously not. Um, mm. Can you get back to us on on our response and you th if you think it's sufficient enough? In the meantime, Tommy Stirgard Mickelson. Uh, I'm looking at the Orbea Keram Max 2019, which looks nice and has a Bosch Active Line Plus motor. My question is, have you any experience with the bike and if the Active Line Plus would be good enough for trails with the uphill? Uh, not ridden that bike, but what I do know is the Active Line is powerful enough mm -hmm. because the main point is it's a mid-drive motor. Now, mid-drive motors are far superior to hub-drive motors on e-bikes. They, you know, got more they're more able when it comes to technical uphill climbs. But um, Tommy goes on to say, uh, I know it has less Newton meters of torque and Bosch said it'd be great for long distances compared to the CX engine. And one of my targets is a 40K ride uh, to home and work again in eco settings, but it'd be nice to do a little climbing also. I live in Denmark, so we don't have big climbs, but the occasional short, steep climb in recre recreational areas. Um, I think it'd be fine, it's a big 500, totally, 500 totally. watt hour battery and that uh, motor is going to be super efficient as well. So it shouldn't be a struggle at all, 40 kilometers. Yeah. And you, you could even probably ride maybe in boost turbo, possibly for that far. Yeah, 40Ks easily, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, just uh, press buy, Tommy, just press buy. Yeah, it looks pretty fun bike and as well, check it out online. And it looks pretty capable, even for like light trail use too. It's nice looking hardtail. So yeah, good choice. Uh, Bug Boy, 15, 2002. Ask MBN, haven't seen a lot of content about chains and longevity of components on the channel lately. Could one safely assume that there is a certain amount of budgeting required to keep an e-bike maintained, i.e. chain size, etc.? What a great question. Mm, well, an absolute banger of a question. Exactly. Well, it's no big surprise, no hidden thing that e-bikes do use. Well, I don't know if they actually use or wear more components. I think they're actually doing more miles. Yeah. Do you think? Yes, yeah, so more wear. More wear, more miles, but it's not... Over, you know, over a standard mountain bike. You yes, know, it is. Do you think? Yeah, yeah totally. Because... You've got more power going through the cranks and, and cassette. But you're riding more as well. So you're going to you're wear riding more as well. I, I think there definitely is more wear on an e-bike. And, and I think tyres is a big mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And obviously, if you're going to be doing those technical climbs, you need to, for, well, climbs and descents. Mm -hmm. So you need you need to have some bite on those tyres. Yeah. But chains Break. is definitely one. Yeah, chains, cassettes, chain rings, brake pads, all the usual stuff. I'd love to have some brake pads on my bike. Yeah, you'd be able to feel the power of them then. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I don't, as I say, you just need to keep on top of the maintenance on that, keep it all degreased and lubed on every Absolutely. ride, maximise yeah. that chain life. I think in, in, in many ways, you need to give more love to mm. an e-bike than an on-e-bike, yeah, don't you? A bit more maintenance, and maybe a little bit more budget, but you could do a lot more riding, so it makes sense. also going to give you a payback in terms of uh, probably a little bit more life from your battery. Yeah, definitely. But that's it for this week's show. If you guys have got any more questions you want to ask us, drop them in the comments box below hashtag ask EMBN and we'll get back to you ASAP don't forget if you've enjoyed today's video you can subscribe to EMBN by clicking the globe in the middle of the screen yeah and if you want to stick with us check out the restricted versus de-restricted e-bike video which me and Chris did yeah don't forget to give us a thumbs up drop some comments in the box below and we'll see you in the next one